Hey, yo, listeners, uh, how's it going? So this is us at Sleeping Giant Africa, and we're going to be experimenting with a different type of format of video. Essentially, we would like to make more of the kinds of videos that we have been making, but they take time and we just don't necessarily have the time and resources like that right now. So instead, we're going to opt for maybe something of a kind of um simpler, more to the point format. And OK, you're not going to get the same flashy videos and um, animations which kind of really help to drive the message home and articulate our vision or what we're trying to say. But in return, these videos will give you a bit more depth and detail into um, different issues relating to the world of construction in Africa. And whenever you, whenever the conversation is taken to construction in Africa, there's one particular party, one particular country that you simply cannot ignore and just can't leave out of the conversation. And I think you guys know the answer. You know what I'm going to say, and that is China. Uh, we've spoken about China on this channel in the past. Um, we've made a video on it that you can check out on our channel. And yeah, they've been busy in Africa. They've been undertaking a lot of different infrastructure projects going from subway stations, railway lines, power stations, like bridges, just anything of importance that you can think of the Chinese have their fingerprints on it, whether it's in the form of the uh, contractors who are actually carrying out the work, um, who's financing it. Yeah, there's just so many layers. And as a result of this, it's kind of uh, attracted the attention of other onlookers, namely being um, those of the West. Uh, many uh, Western countries and former colonial powers or big players right now in France, the UK, the USA have um, yeah been big on, you know, talking about this relationship between Africa and China and, you know, what's going on. And yeah, a big kind of narrative that has been uh, kind of put out there for over over 10 years now is that, you know, it, you know just something there must be something sinister at play you know it can't just be a simple matter of you know two uh, parties agreeing to deal with each other that's mutually beneficial there has to be something else to this initially it was about um, the whole resources for infrastructure idea where it's like oh you know China funds a particular infrastructure project and, and in return they get all of this land and they own all of the resources under it and they're just owning all of the land in Africa and it's this big land grab. So that was kind of echoed and spoken about for a minute and then all of a sudden, I think maybe in the last like five years or so, this talk of a uh, debt trap diplomacy came about and... A lot of the time when people talk about it, they use this example of the Sri Lankan port and uh, how there was this apparent Chinese takeover where, yes, you've got these Chinese uh, state-owned or state-affiliated banks and uh, the government themselves, government-owned banks, who are kind of just flooding, just swamping all of these different... Um, developing countries and mid-income countries with these loans for infrastructure deals that they know they're not going to be able to pay back and in turn when they can't repay them whenever that day comes there's going to be this smoking gun of booyah we got ya now give us your ports give us your airports we own your country this is the kind of um, narrative that has been put out there um long story short uh, it isn't really true, or at least there's no evidence to support it. Um, I've actually written an article on it. Um, I will like leave it in the description box that goes into detail about that Sri Lanka deal. But yes, that's the thing we forget. China is a big player. Over the last 10 or 15 years, they must have financed hundreds of billions of dollars worth of different infrastructure and construction projects across Africa and Latin America. I think I saw a stat that uh, Bratigam, Deborah Bratigam, who is like a big, uh, kind of a big academic in this field, 
who has been studying this subject for quite a while. And she said that from the year 2000 until now, so maybe over like a 15, 20 year period, um, China has bankrolled infrastructure, infrastructure projects to the tune of about $150 billion. So it's like, it's big stuff. But anyway, point is we're moving on from that and we're getting to the actual evidence and the proof because that's the thing when it comes to this debt trap diplomacy a lot of people talk about this Sri Lanka um, Palumbo or somewhere like that they talk about that they don't really go into the nitty-gritty of it they just kind of mention it and they talk about how like a Chinese company is now taken over and is managing that port and then it's just kind of like boom here's all of the evidence we need and here we have a study that was uh, just recently released and published as of this month and this week, I think, by Anna Gelpern, Sebastian Horn, Scott Morris, Brad Parks, and Christoph Trebesch. And it's titled, How China Lends A Rare Look Into 100 Debt Contracts with Foreign Governments. Okay. And yeah, just basically, it just goes into the nitty gritty. It goes through different types of contracts. Yeah. This is, if you want to know more about this and really get to the truth, you should probably start with this report. And essentially, what it um, kind of uh, posits, what it, um, the conclusions it comes to based on its research through all of these uh, in-depth reports, I mean, these in-depth contracts that they've managed to kind of get through various means between the China Exim Bank and the China Development Bank and numerous governments across uh, Africa and Latin America is, you know, they've looked into it and then they've also compared it. They've used like a benchmark related to that. Yeah, the type of infrastructure and uh, construction kind of lending contracts that these different African countries have with, uh, you know, Western donors, Western uh, institutions, such as the IMF and the World Bank and so on. So they compare them and the conclusion that they were led to is, um, I guess, first we just need to nip it in the bud and it goes back to the fact that, yeah, there is no evidence to um, suggest that China is setting up these contracts and lending this money with the intent of, um, yeah, uh, uh, with the intent of like a debt trap diplomacy, with the intent of swamping these African countries with monies that they can't money they can't repay in order to um to take over their physical physical assets and infrastructure. Yeah, the evidence is not there. Um I don't know what else you really want me to say. Um it's just not there. Uh when it comes if, if anything it's the opposite. Um there are lots of mechanisms in place which kind of really work to ensure repayment like with uh china yeah they like apply in commercial terms it like it, it's a they're approaching it like a business and that is what it is it's a business and i wish that more of um more of africa and the african intellectuals started looking at that because china as a whole sees um these infrastructure projects as a gateway into those wider markets they know that if they can get their various state-owned um, engineering and construction companies to carry out one or two projects in one particular country and in turn they familiarize themselves with that market along with um, the country and the government then that positions them to win future contracts in those different countries and when it comes to uh, construction, infrastructure development, Africa is one of the big markets right now because there's so much work to be done. I'm not going to talk too much about this because there isn't much else to say. Um, China's kind of done what they've had to do. Um, it's not a matter of like if or when or, you know, this is something that is a brewing. It's happened. Um, I think, again, there's a podcast the China Africa podcast by Olander and Kobus. And uh, they were recently interviewing Bratigam and uh, another person, I think his name is Kevin Gallagher, something like that. And she, Bratigam, said that um, 
of the international contracts. So you've got all these Chinese engineering and construction companies that are just building things around the world. And 30% of their international contracts happen in Africa. So it's a business. You know what I mean? It was a way to, you know, basically guarantee business and contracts for their company. But yes, you know, going back to the loans, the like terms are like commercial terms in terms of the interests. Interest rates aren't the lowest. Um, and yeah, there are like another, there are like three things which, uh, I guess set them apart, set these Chinese contracts with different African governments for infrastructure projects apart. And those three thing, things seem to be that, you know, of course there's the secrecy within the contracts themselves, the, uh, borrowers in these different African and Latin American governments are essentially sworn to secrecy. And, you know, if they if they release parts of the contract, then, you know, it can lead to, you know, big repercussions in terms of like, you know, um, future lending of money and blah, 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 blah. So they're really clouded in secrecy and they're clearly stated in the contracts themselves that like, you know, you don't mention anything about this. You shut your mouth and, <laughs> you know, you keep this between us. So there's that. Uh, the second thing is um, there's like a use of special accounts. Like I'm not a finance whiz kid here, so I'm going to need some help. But it seems to work in a way of like these special accounts are broken broken up into two areas. The first area is that when the loan repayments are being made, the different African government or Latin American government, the recipient of the money, the borrower, has to make repayments to a certain special account by a particular date. And like, if that doesn't happen, then apparently that like triggers off other aspects of the contract. But yeah, they have to make this payment into the special account and no money can be withdrawn from that. And it's like, yeah, the lender can just, just like takes money from that special account and uses it to pay off um, the debt. So there's that aspect of the, of the special account. And then there's the other aspect where you go back to those resources for infrastructure deals that we mentioned before, where they talk about, um, yeah, essentially China Exim Bank issues a loan to the Venezuelan government. I think they use that example because the Venezuelan government, they want to build an an industrial park and they need money for the roads and the power stations and the, to upgrade their port. So they want to borrow this money there will be an arrangement where maybe I think a particular, like maybe a a Venezuelan state owned um, petroleum company or whatever, they will agree to supply in um, a particular, a selected Chinese company with a given number of barrels of oil per day, per month. And essentially Whenever um, those barrels of oil are sold to the Chinese company, the Chinese company pays that into the account. It doesn't, the, um, the Venezuelan oil company doesn't receive that money. It gets paid into that special account that is used to pay down the debt that was taken on in order to build the industrial park and all of the roads and um, upgrade the port, for example. So that's the the two aspects to the special account. And then thirdly, you get another feature of the contract in terms of if a situation were to arise where it seems like a particular borrower doesn't seem as if they're going to be able, like they're in economic distress, okay? So it could be like, I don't know, falling commodity prices, some type of war or yeah, civil war, something that's going to bring instability and possibly economic distress to that, that borrower. In that situation, the lender has the option of accelerating the loan terms. By accelerating the loan terms, it's just kind of saying, hey, we, I know we had kind of agreed to, you know, paying it over 10 years and paying it at these um, rates on this basis. But we're going to have to kind of shorten that because we don't know if you're going to still be around in 10 years. That's what they're basically saying. They're just like, yeah, pay the money now. We're kind of getting shook uh, because you are in this situation. Um, So, yeah, you have that acceleration feature. Um, Also, situations where like they um, where 
maybe there's seen to be a threat to Chinese companies within that country. That loan loan terms will be accelerated there in terms of payment. And then um, I think the only case where default is permitted, whatever that means, is if the country cancels all of its like official diplomatic relations with uh, China. I think that's the only kind of thing where default or it's the kind of like accepted scenario. Besides that, it's not accepted. Um, there's also this whole thing about cross cancellation where if um, a, a particular borrower like uh, this Venezuelan government is seen to not really be repaying the loans of, yeah, they're not like, they say there's three loans, loan A, loan B, loan C. And the Venezuelan government is doing perfectly fine paying off loan A, but they're having an issue with paying off loan C. Then, um, yeah, loan A and loan B can, yeah, they could kind of accelerate the payment terms or uh, cancel the loan on the basis of, of like, oh, you, you're not really being seen to afford to keep up with uh, loan C. So what makes you, what makes us think that in the future you'll be able to really continue holding down the fort on loan A and loan B. We're going to cancel this. We want immediate re repayment or we're going to go and accelerate the terms. So yes, that is a breakdown of um, the uh, contract and all the different terms. Took me a lot longer than planned. And yeah, essentially, yeah, um, I have my own thoughts on it. I don't think it should be uh, shrouded in the secrecy that it is shrouded in because it is public money, you know, taxpayer money. So it should be, you know, more, more of the details should be disclosed to the public, especially because some of these are big loans for some of the countries that they're taking on. And, you know, a lot of their fate and destiny may be tied down to the repayment of that loan. So, yeah, I could see that issue there. Um but then beyond that, you have to, you know, perhaps China could um, put out more favorable terms and loans. But then you also have to remember that in doing these projects and financing them, China has taken on a lot of risk, and China's taken on a lot of taken on a lot of risk that a lot of other lenders aren't prepared to do. You don't see like the European Development Bank, the IMF, the World Bank, the African Development Bank. Um, the US Exim Import Bank, they're not they're not going to these different like lower mid income and mid income countries and going, hey, we're gonna comp entirely upgrade and build a new port, or we're gonna go and like build this like 100, 200, 300 kilometer railway line, or we're gonna go and build, we're gonna go and finance a subway system in your like major city, um, we're gonna go and build a multi country railway line or um road or um freeway like these are pretty big large scale complex projects with a lot of moving parts which involve risk and i guess these contracts are a way of trying to mitigate those risks let me know what you let me know what you think in the comment section um you know why is it shrouded in so much secrecy and more importantly what is it that uh, African governments can do to, yeah, get better deals in relation to these contracts? Um, because from my perspective, from where I'm looking at it, there's a lot of money on the table here. There are many different ways in which China is benefiting from these uh, infrastructure deals. It's not just a simple situation of, oh, China's so charitable and look at how they're helping us. They're helping us. They're helping Africa to help themselves big time. And we and Africa needs to find a way, different African countries need to find a way to get a better deal because they have leverage. They just don't know it. But yeah, I'm done for now. Uh, peace. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. We're going to keep them coming at you, giving you the lowdown on all of the different infrastructure projects that are happening in the continent because there are so many of them. Like, share and subscribe. Thanks.